Bienvenue à « Comment gagner de l'argent » et « Comment créer une entreprise et augmenter vos revenus » avec Glendon Cameron. What is going on, people? Happy holidays! Mine was great. Hopefully yours is awesome, too. I was letting things roll around in the old noggin. And I was thinking about the other 1%. You heard about it in the news, Occupy Wall Street, the 99% turds. And I came across a new ratios. The other 1%. We don't really talk about them. We talk about, you know, fantastically wealthy people, and there's much talk about how some of these people got their wealth through diabolical means versus hard work and earning, you know, working like you do at that job. And I really thought about it. This is the fifth year of me doing what I do here on YouTube with the business. And it hit me. There's another 1% that no one talks about. That 1% that executes. I want to ask you a question. How many of you who are listening to this video have plans on doing something with your life and how many of you had these plans for the last year two years five years six years eight years ten years you had these plans they're good plans you have the resources but for some reason you just have not taken that step of execution why is that I'm going to tell you why. It's not that important to you. One of the things that I've noticed since I really have uh, ratcheted up the consulting business is the people who do the best with the information respect their business. They respect their business. I was answering some questions in a group on Facebook and was talking about the heat and lack of support that I will say most entrepreneurs don't get. You know, they just, uh, most entrepreneurs, you know, there's some people with wonderful families, wonderful uh, friends and networks that support their entrepreneur efforts. But the reality is, you know, as the old joke goes, what is an entrepreneur? A person without a job. And it's not said in glowing terms. I was going through it and, you know, it, it's just essentially the person who was saying, oh, my family really supports me and they really like it. She has a full-time job. It's a, I, I was kind. I didn't say this. It's when you have a full-time job, your side business is just that. It's your side business. You don't have to push on it hard unless you are a remarkable person, unless you're part of that 1% chances of you pushing that business very hard are slim than that. That's not going to happen because you're too comfortable. You're too comfortable. As long as you're comfortable, as long as the bills are paid, as long as things are well, you are not going to make that move to really push that business. Because let's just examine what happens. And this is one of the reasons I changed around my webinar times. Most of my webinars in previous years were done 8, 9, 10 p.m. When I did my webinars in the middle of the day, I got the highest attendance rate ever. Why? Because it was, you know, it was mostly business people or people who were really respecting their business. Respecting their business. And it led me to some new insights. You can have the best information in the world. You can have all of the money that you need for your endeavor. But if you do not have drive and the ability to execute, it's the same as not having it. You can look at it and it's like, yes, I have all of these assets that will help me with this entrepreneur project, but you will not. You just won't. And then there's somebody out there who has not even two cold shillings to rub together who are putting out 
Now, what's the difference? Person with the two cold shillings, they're in pain. They're in the position where things are harmful. They're in the position where it hurts. They're in the position where life is not that good. They can't get comfortable. Every moment is agony. There's something that goes lacking. So that they're not so much hungry as they are in pain. And what do we know about pain? You will do anything you can to alleviate the pain. If you've ever seen someone with a chronic illness, with a morphine pump, just, or you've ever been in that situation when you hurt that bad, you understand. So their motivation is to remove themselves from the threshold of pain. They're trying to get away from that pain. Whereas when you're comfortable and life is good, the pain is minimal. Only when you get to the point where the pain is catastrophic, where you just can't take it no more, will you be moved to a higher level of action. Someone once said that the true catalyst for a change is an extremely large goal or chaos. I will say that 90% of the people who move from one point to another is because of chaos, a crisis, calamity, something like that. Happened to me. That's the reason that I developed a hustler's mindset. Third time being laid off, um, couldn't do it no more. It's like, I can't, I can't be in this position no more. I can't be in this position. I've got to come up with a better plan. I can't, I can't do this. So that's why you are not executing because you're not in that top 1%. Earl Nightingale had put down that the top 5% were people who had goals. If you simply have goals written down with a flimsy action plan, not even a tight one, you enter into the top 5% right there because so many people don't have goals. They'll tell you, I have goals. I'm working on something. And then a year later, you look at them and you're like, okay, where's the evidence? I would rather execute and fall flat on my face than to sit and ponder and wonder what if. You've got to develop that level of courage, the courage to fail, the courage to explore. Because as long as you're playing it safe and if you have these goals and these plans and you're not executing, you're playing it safe. Uh, there's this Mimi going around, which I really like. The only reason that you can't succeed is because of that bullshit story you continue to tell yourself. Many people talk themselves out of starting that business. Many people talk themselves out of having a great relationship. Many people talk themselves out of traveling around the world. Because when you start to explore some things, frequently you will find out that what is required is not as harsh as you think it is. You have to become an explorer into your success. You have to because right now your success is a jungle. There are trees all over the place. There's snakes and there's high brush. And you've got to get your machete, put on your suit of camo or whatever you need, and go into that jungle and start making your way. My success was covered in mud. There was a lot of stuff that's going on. And honestly, I really, really feel that this is really, I still feel like I'm in the infancy of what I'm doing. I mean, it's very exciting. Some people would be like, man, five years, you ain't where you need to be. You know, as, as uh, Sweet Brown said, who got time for that? I do. It's a journey. And I will say on this enterprise, I'm enjoying the journey. I'm enjoying the people. I'm enjoying the work. And it's a different groove. But you if you don't execute, it's, you know, that's that top percent, it, 1%. If you are not executing, you are 99 percenter and not in a good way. You are 99 percenter by default and choice. You're not a 99 percenter because of some mischievous, uh, diabolical, worldwide plan of domination. You're in that 99 percent because you have bought into sheep theory. 
you have bought into creature comforts, you think that comfort is more important than success. So as long as you're comfortable, you'll be where you are. You'll be in that 99% of people who do not execute on a higher level. I'm not talking about going to college, buying a house, buying a car, living on your own. That is what you should be doing, you low expectation having motherfucker. You should be educating yourself. You should live on your own. You should buy a car. Yeah, this is what adults do. That's not a higher level of execution. Those are meeting normal social expectations. It's normal shit. A higher level of expectation is I have this dream of this app. This app is going to cost me 5000 to make. Uh, I got a car I like, but it's paid for. So I'm going to sell that car, take the $7,000 that I get for selling the car, but take two, buy myself a hoopty, then take the five and put into the app. That's a higher level of execution and activity. Whereas a low level of execution looks like, well, how can I get to 5000 Maybe, um, if, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe I'll ask somebody for it. No, no, no. Maybe I'll sell some stuff. No, no, no. And you go through this period of low expectation thinking for years. Not a day, not a month, not a week. Years. Years of just spinning this around. And then someone who's in the top 1% of executors will take your ideal to the market. You will see your shit on television and you'll be pissed. You'll sit around and tell the people that are sitting next to you, hey, they stole my ideal. They stole it. Motherfuckers. I thought of that shit 10 years ago. Yes, I did. And then you get up and you go into the office and you pull out your journal, your diary, and your plans. See, I thought about it. And you did. And you were first. But you did not fucking execute. You only went 5% in and left 95% on the table. The ideal, the goal planning, that's the small part. The large part is the action. Action is the greatest truth there is. I don't listen to what people say anymore. I look at what they do. That's the truth. That will tell you everything you need to know about that person. Someone tells you they're a good person, but they do shady shit consistently. There you are. Someone tells you that they're successful, but every time you see them, they're trying to borrow money from someone because they don't have money. There you are. You have someone that tells you that they're an adult, but every time life gets hard, they act like a child and run home to mama. There you are. Look at what people do. Don't listen to what they say unless the actions match up with the words. That's called congruency. And many people are highly incongruent. And if you're sitting there pissed at this video, then I am talking about your janky ass. I am talking about you so bad. I am making all of those lies that your mother and your daddy told you that you were a good person, that you were special. You were such a special little baby. You were filled with promise. And now your ass is 40 something, 50 something, 60 something. You ain't done shit with your life other than suck up oxygen off of the planet. They lied to you and you believed it. Only when that promise is realized in accomplishment, which comes from effort, does that become true. Unfortunately, a young man lost his way and killed six people this weekend. And there's some racist shit involved with it. Part of his inferiority complex was this black boy, as he put in his manifesto, 
was how could this black boy fuck this beautiful blonde girl when I can't? He's not even special. He's not, I'm, you know, a descendant of such and such, and I should be able to do that. I read that, told me everything I need to know. This person was living in a state of the few of delusion. There are many people, black, white, purple, who have been fed a false bill of goods that they are special based on their inherent traits of their ethnicity family name so on and so forth and it's all bullshit you become special when you contribute to the world not because your mama and daddy told you you were special and part of the reason and i'm not a psychologist or anything like that but part of the reason he cracked up and he took his anger out on six people innocent people who did nothing to him was every day reality was telling him they lied to you it's a lie and he couldn't deal with the truth so he lost it and there are many people and that's one of the things that really concerns me with this faux self-esteem bullshit that you're a good person you're special i've seen many people who claim to be religious and they're evil as the, the would make the devil go oh my god the devil sitting next to me like, hey, I can't fuck with him. What? That motherfucker is more evil than I am. And I am Beals above himself. Makes the devil blush with fear. But they're religious. Look at what people do. And more importantly, become one who executes on a consistent basis. Execute. If you have an ideal, don't wait until the next day. If your ideal has 30 parts and it's 11.30 a.m., it's 11.30 p.m., and you've, you've got maybe 30 minutes of energy, you chop down those 30 parts, and you do what you can in those 30 minutes before you go to bed. That gives you something called momentum. Momentum is extremely important. So when you wake up and you see, wow, I had 30 things to do. Now I have 29 or 27. And then you do one or two of those things before you go to work. Then you come home and you do another. And before you know it, you have velocity to your momentum because this is one of the reasons, and there's many people who've said it, Glendon Cameron, you're arrogant. No, I'm fucking accomplished. You can say what you want, you could talk all kind of smaggity smack about me, but the fact is, I sat my ass in the room, I created a book, I put it out to the world, and the world said, hey, we like that shit. That's called accomplishment. And many people will go to their graves without doing something like that. And what's really, really sad is that it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. Everyone has the ability to accomplish something. But people in the 99% of non-executors throw stones, stick their little lips out, and pout on the corner like spoiled little children. They sit there and they go, ah, oh, you're arrogant. So what if you wrote a book? So what if you got yourself out of homelessness? So what if you created a company and provided jobs? So what, motherfucker? You think you special? Come back here on the block and drink this 40 so we can really be special. Come down to my level so I can feel much better about myself. Because you represent the false promise that I was told that I have and I have not realized. And every time I look at you, it causes me pain because every day I know I am getting further and further away from that promise because I am lazy, I am misguided, I don't have any goals, and I don't know how to get there, but it's much easier for me to hate on you than for me to lift myself up because I don't know how. Do you want to be in that 99% of losers? Yeah, I said that. Because if you, and you're there by choice, you're there by choice. You choose to stay there. There's a guy, I'm going to give a shout out to Cleaver. Cleaver got in on one of my hangouts. Cleaver asked a simple question. I have no transportation. I have no car. I have no money. How do I make money? I gave him, I talked to him 45 seconds, maybe 90 seconds at the most and answered it. 
Cleaver took action. Cleaver executed. Cleaver got a car now. And this is about, what, six weeks now? Cleaver took action and continued to take action. And why? Cleaver was in pain. And he's moving away from that pain. Some of my best students are the people who are in pain. Don't have a job or in a bad situation. Or if they have a job, they can't stand it. Every day they go to that job, a piece of their soul dies. And at that point, I'm like, fuck it. I'll be homeless. Fuck it. I'll move in with my parents. Fuck it. I need to change. Best students because they're motivated by the pain. They're no longer comfortable. It's not cozy in that life they had. They're moving forward. And if, you know, going back to the arrogant thing, I was talking to my kid about this, and I've noticed something. The only people who think I'm arrogant are the folks who ain't accomplished shit in their life. I was talking to someone I didn't know recently, actually, <laughs> at the hotel, and just just talking. You know, we're sitting there drinking, talking, drinking, talking. Later on, you know, and the dude and I, we vibe very well. As we're checking out, find out dude owns a $50 million company. He ain't called me arrogant. We're boys. Kind of interesting how that shit works out. So if people in your circle call you high-minded, arrogant, you've outgrown your upbringing, uh, you think you're special, chances are you're on the correct path because you've disrupted your social circle and it's not happy. It's not happy. And you may have to do that to have the life that you want because as you go on your journey of success, everyone's not going with you. This includes family. This includes people you love. They can't come because their mind would not allow them to go through that portal of success with you. They're going to hit that portal and bounce back because that mindset is so corrupt, it's so messed up, it is so janky. If you could look inside, it would look like a house that's falling apart on itself. There would be scorpions and spider webs and holes and rotten woods with maggots. That's what their mindset is composed of. And they can't go with you. You want to go. You see this all the time with successful uh, celebrities, athletes. They try to bring these people up with them. And some of the people can come because they'll change their mindset. Some of the people say, look, you know, we can't do this stupid shit we were doing on the block. You are XYZ athlete, XYZ whatever. And that's not a good look for you. We can't do that anymore. That means I got to put on a suit. That means I must change the way that I speak so we can keep this enterprise going because we've got something special. And you know what? We do this right. It's not going to benefit us. It's going to benefit your grandkids. The biggest problem we have is people don't think of the folks they leave behind. You know, a lot of people think of leaving a legacy of bullshit. We're the Clampets. We drink a lot. Ha ha. We leave that to our children. We're the Bennets. Uh, we leave our kids fucked up shit. People are not thinking about legacy. They're thinking about the here and now. So if you need any more reason to become a person who execute, think about four, five, six generations after you're gone and what you're going to leave them. But when they mention your name, when they talk about grandpa so-and-so or grandma so-and-so, are they going to say, she made a nice apple pie? Or are they going to talk about you the way the Vanderbilts talk about Cornelius? Or the Mellons talk about Granddad? Or the way Marcus Garvey family talks about him? Or the children of Malcolm X, the way they talk about him? They speak of him with reverence. He's gone, but his impact will last for centuries. Do you want to be like that? Or do you want to be apple pie? Or, well, she had a cute smile. Well, he was a good boy. Um, what do you want? You can pick it. You can pick it. You can. There are people out there who will commit heinous acts of crime who will be remembered while your good, well-behaved ass will be forgotten. I said it once. I'll say it again. If you're going to fuck up, fuck up on a massive scale. <laughs> if you're going to fuck up, fuck up on a massive scale. But what, what's your choice? What are you going to pick? Because... If you're going to wait around to the end of the year, then you can set your New Year's resolutions up. 
you are a fucking idiot. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I want to say welcome to the people, new, new folks to this channel. And uh, there's about 500 hours of content on this channel. So I know you haven't seen it all. I use profanity here and there. There's some videos I may say fuck 80 times. There's videos where I won't utter one cuss word. If the fact that I use profanity offends your delicate senses to the point that you can't watch the videos, what that means is we're not for each other. Not mean you're stupid, doesn't mean I'm bad. It just means we're not for each other. Because this channel is for people who slay fucking dragons. And if you're slaying dragons, a few cuss words is not going to fuck up your sensibilities. This channel is for heroes. This channel is for winners. This channel is for people who have the courage to take ownership of their lives. That is the work of warriors. That is the work of the brave. That is not stuff for Namby Pamby. You cuss too much, Glendon. Because what life will do to you and your children is far more damaging, impactful than me saying fuck. Really, it is. Just that little message. I'm probably going to put it at the beginning of the video because I like the way that that rolled off my tongue. But are you a warrior? Are you one who executes? Are you one that is going to say, life is hard, but I'm harder. I got that from one of my Hispanic friends. Life may be hard, but I'm much harsher. Or some, I don't know the exact way, but I liked it and it was cool. And I, I, I put that, I adopted that into the uh, philosophy. What are you going to do? Are you going to execute? Or are you going to continue to be executed or puns the plans of other people? What are you going to do? Are you going to make this a life of intent and design? Or are you going to just keep doing the same old, same old thing? I know somebody at the age of 38 who had to go back home and live with their parents because they had not prepared for life the way it is. There are many people like that. You have to prepare for the rain before it rains. You have to prepare for the rain when it's sunny, not when the rain comes out. You have to prepare for winter during the summer so your ass can eat. This is what you have to do. So if today is a real good day and you know you sitting there with the barbecue and hanging out with your friends and you have not done one thing in this year and it's the fifth month of the year that will improve your success, maybe you need to get up off your ass, go into the house and craft some plans of success. Because what you do when no one is looking is way more important than what happens when everybody's watching. That I'm talking about those hours of crafting, those hours of planning. Those, you know, we watch an NBA game and we are in totally enthralled and just enraptured by the athleticism. And we'll watch that for about two hours. But we don't see the dozens and dozens and or for some of these people thousands of hours of practice that went into making that jump shot perfect, making that move per perfected. We don't watch that, but you know, we and we in America have this fascination with an innate ability, whereas one of the reasons I love Asian culture is if you don't have it, you can get it. That's the premise that comes across. You don't, you're not born smart, you get smart. Here we're like, oh, you know, if you're not a natural leader, you can't become one. If you're not naturally smart, you can't be smart. Once again, execution. You're getting that 1%, you'll learn that many of the things that were told to you as a child are absolute lies. You must uh, be affiliated with the right people. Uh, that girl ain't gonna take you home to her daddy because you're black. Uh, that girl, lies, lies, lies. Why? So, going back to the 99%, when you execute, when you get out there in the world, you start to see things the way they are because you're living on truth. But when you live on lies and projections, you live a false life. And many people turn those falsehoods into reality by inactivity. So, pick your poison. Do you want to be in the top 1%? And that's people who execute. Or do you want to stay in that 99% of non-executors? You can give them a roadmap to success 
put up flags at each checkpoint and give them cards. Still not going to do it. Just not going to do it. Don't just not going to do it. We refuse to do it. And then get pissed off and sitting in their chair saying, somebody stole my idea. Motherfucker. <laughs> All right. This is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side. Be sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel and join Hustler University for more of this hard-hitting commentary. It's politically not correct. I say cuss words, and I enjoy myself immensely. So with that, I'll see you on the good side.